welcome back to my studio channel. This is Caroline. Today I want to talk to you about color. In order for us to perceive color, we need light. Look at this beautiful sunset at Kwaksiwi Resort up near Port Hardy on Vancouver Island. Isn't it amazing? This is a panoramic shot that I took that evening. And look, on the far right, there's a double rainbow. Light that passes through a prism or a cut crystal like this one, or through raindrops, is refracted into the color spectrum, also known as a rainbow. Light is one type of electromagnetic radiation the only type the human eye can perceive. The visible spectrum includes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. But on either side of that spectrum are some colors that we can't see and some rays that we can't perceive. Cosmic rays, gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet, and then infrared rays microwaves and radio waves. These are all types of electromagnetic radiation, but we only see the spectrum in the middle. This was a spectacular triple rainbow that I saw after a great big rainstorm in Creston, BC. The third rainbow was quite faint, but the first two were pretty bright. Aren't they beautiful? When light falls on an object, the surface will reflect or absorb it. Depending on the composition, the molecular structure, and the texture of the surface. So, an object that appears to be a certain color, pink for example, is actually absorbing the whole spectrum except for pink, which is reflected back and is made visible to you. Objects that appear to be a dark color are absorbing most of the light, and white or bright objects are reflecting a lot of it back. It's important to know that mixing colored light is different from mixing pigments for drawing or painting. Artists who draw and paint work with pigment, a colored material that is completely or nearly insoluble or doesn't dissolve in water, and also dyes, a colored substance that chemically bonds with the surface and is dissolvable or soluble in water. Some examples of pigments include ochre, charcoal, lapis lazuli, and dyes include woad, indigo, saffron, madder, and cochineal. Pigments and dyes come from many sources, plants, minerals, insects, chemicals, tree resins, metals, even urine. They can be natural or synthetic, which means man-made. A pigment will absorb part of the light spectrum and reflect back a visible color. Pigments and dyes are made into art supplies such as pencil crayons, oil pastels, oil paints, acrylic paints, watercolors, inks, chalk pastels, and many other things. Pigments and dyes are added to a medium of some kind to create these supplies. There are international standards for how colorants, pigments and dyes, are made so that the resulting colors are consistent. One standard is called the Color Index International, which was first published in 1925. Paint pigments vary in a few ways. They can be transparent, which means they're clear and you can see through them. They can be translucent, which means they're semi-see-through. They can be opaque, where you can't see through them. And they can have qualities of refraction, where they bend the light. We are working with watercolors, which tend to be transparent or translucent. The colors have names based on the pigments they're made out of. It's a good idea to paint test swatches of all your colors to see how they look on the paper. 
once they've dried. You can experiment with mixing colors and create a collection of swatches. Label them with the colors you use to make them so you can recreate those colors as needed. Also, try to recreate colors that you see on a field trip. For example, you could sit down in the woods and try to reproduce every color you see around you in the leaves and foliage. It's a good challenge. Another good challenge is to actually draw your watercolor set and then paint it. That way you can get samples of every color right there in your drawing and challenge your skills of observation. Above all, it's good to experiment and see what colors you can create. A lot of trial and error can yield great results. There's trial and error, and then there's color theory, which is what I will tackle next in the video I make. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll let the time lapse uh, run so you can watch me do this little study of my watercolor set. And I challenge you to try it for yourself at home. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and happy painting.